Okay, this is Seeking Sister Wife, Season 2, Episode 12, Tell All. And this is not the first or second time we've recorded this. It's actually the third, because our babysitter, a mother-in-law who lives with us, uh, is not feeling well, and so we had to try to record with a screaming baby. And then we had a big fight. It went really well. <laughs> right in the middle. Um, I need a cigarette. Give me a cigarette. I need a cigarette right now. That is... Pretty close to what happened. Okay, so um, Bernie's got a new look. Creeper. Not the choice More I would have made. It creepier. does make him look creepier, uh, which I think is fitting. Um, so we're gonna, just going to kind of go through this in order of the of how the episode happened. It, the episode actually hopped around quite a bit. So they talked to all of them. Then they talked to just the Eldridge's and Jennifer, and then you know Bernie and Paige and Brandy, and then just the husband. Or, and, but before that, just the husbands and just the wives. So it's kind of a mess. So they start off talking about Jennifer, who is... Bat shit crazy. Bat Certifiable. Bat shit crazy. And she does not have a child. I, or a boyfriend. She could have a boyfriend. Nope. She could be. She could have a child. Nope. Um, I she don't has think... neither. I don't think there's a lot of evidence that she is a child. And she just, I think she just thought, oh, if I say it's for the, the best of my child, everyone will have to leave me alone. Except it's not like they were saying you have to drink. And she's like, no, no, not for the safety of my unborn child. Like, she was supposedly dating them and then had to fake her own death. Like, that's not something that pregnancy has a lot to do with. It just, the whole thing was nuts. Not something normal people do. This is definitely. Even close to normal. No, it's not. And I've known people who are kind of habitual liars. And that's exactly how they lie. You think someone who's a habitual liar lies in a way that makes sense? No, it's the exact opposite. It is in ways that don't make sense about things that don't need to be happening. Like, she could have just said, you know what? I'm just not feeling this. I, I just want to go home. And the producers would have been like, okay, that's cool. She could have told him, I'm just not into you. This just isn't working. I'm pretty sure the producers would have loved to have like pulled her aside, do a talking head interview, discuss it with her. Because all they're looking for is to finish the storyline. The whole thing is everyone is in the show, signs up to do the show, with the agreement that they will expose, expose, it, expose themselves, expose their lives... Nobody and wants to and, see that. and you'll be able to finish this thing. I mean, that's the whole idea. And so the idea that she just disappears leaves the storyline hanging. And even the producers were like, "Oh, well, show us the baby." Show, you know, they're just trying. All they're trying to do is to finish off the storyline in a way that us, the viewers, the, and doesn't get any of the cameramen murdered. Right. Well, because she's nuts. Well, that too. So anyway, so she shows up and she's all mad. I hear them talking crap. Well, all they said is that you're a liar. Which you admit you are. So, I was impressed. I can't remember his name. I was going to call him Eldridge because I can't remember his name. Who Did cares? You? Nobody cares. He actually handled it a lot better than I was. When they were like, is there anything you want to say to her? I would have been like, nope. Thanks for wasting our time. You know. Really? But he was like, I just wish you the best and whatever happened to this. She's like, well, I did. She apologized. But before that, she's like, well, I'm sorry if it's inconvenient or whatever. The whole thing. She did say a 10-pound baby coming out of a 2-pound hole. That's not how you mention holes. That's not how you measure a hole. You don't measure a hole by 2 pounds. Unless... So anyway, that was kind of weird. Although I've been on... It, was, it looked like it was a tweet, and tweets are notoriously bad awesome. for typos. Anyway, it was funny when Vanessa was like, wow, I give her props for showing up. I would have just disappeared. Like, like she did a few you're days like, later. You're like, foreshadowing. <laughs> so we'll get to her. Colton looks better with a beard. I just had to mention that because I found him also to be creepy. Better. I Not know. good. Well, their dynamic is on camera is really bizarre. Anyway, Paige is like, I'm the one who initiated saying I wanted polygamy because I wanted to be able to talk to someone about my husband and them not being mean. And I'm like, first of all, your friends are not going to be thrilled with that description of them. Secondly, get different friends. Yeah, get better friends because that's just really weird. And or, I'm not buying, I'm not buying that she's the one that initiated the polygamy discussion. Uh, didn't she finally come out and say, well, I was going to, just leave, but then we talked about this. Like, no, I think she's meant she was going to leave the filming. Oh, I thought the family. Yeah, so we'll get to that later on. Dimitri and Vanessa and Ashley, I think, I think they, of all the people there, are most aware of how they're perceived and have been adjusting course. 
I'm not saying it's a good quote. I mean, I'm not saying that that makes them, like, good people. I'm just saying they seem to be the most aware of how to present themselves in a way that will be the most appealing to the public, which will work well for them on season three when they're looking for a sister wife. Again. Again. Um, oh, I know what it was. Vanessa, I felt bad for her because her best friend was like, oh, she's just looking to get on TV. And like, then she left right after. So well, that doesn't okay. look good So for we her. have a little bit of a difference. You think... What's your opinion of her? We discussed this in the past two videos. She, she just got with uh, Dimitri and... For TV. For TV. I think that she bought into the... You can lie to yourself as much as you can lie to anyone else. I think she wanted this to be some great thing. Maybe the fact that they were on TV affected her decision. But she seemed... But I think in the end, this is my opinion, is if you have a good relationship... You can, I can hear our son screaming. Sure. Um, if you have a good relationship with your family... Keep going. And they are normal people, and they are highly advising you that they don't think this is good for you, I think you should take that pretty seriously. Now, if you have a terribly dysfunctional family, and everyone in your family is a horrible mess and makes... Okay, I get it. I get it. I know plenty of people that my whole family was against it, and they work out great. But usually they are, they have horrible, horrible relationships with their family to begin with. So the fact that basically everyone in Dimitri and Ashley and Vanessa's life are saying this is a bad idea. Now, he doesn't seem to have a very good relationship with his parents. But yeah, Ashley and know. Vanessa seem to have a good relationship with their family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear him clawing at the door. I mean, Anyway, to me, is probably like all the sisters that she seemed to have a really, their twin sister, all of them seemed to be concerned that she wasn't going to get what she wanted. And in the end, it sounds like... She left. Well, she left, but she kind of said, you know, I thought I was putting my desire, my love of this family ahead of what I needed for myself. Which basically sounds like I loved this idea and theory until I realized that I was at home babysitting someone else's kids. <clears throat> in exchange for sex every other day, maybe, with a guy. Like, that's not a great trade-off, and that he, you know... Anyway, and she changed her diet, which is something that, you know... I'll tell you, plenty of girl has changed their diet and how they dress for a guy, and then one day been like, I like, I like hamburgers. I want a steak. I don't like these clothes. Anyway, then they took that to all the guys. Blah, blah, blah. Well, the most interesting thing about talking to the guys was the girls were backstage and they were talking and one of them goes, oh, any, any guy in polygamy is a good guy because you don't get a, you don't get a second wife by being a bad guy. For I, example, Warren Jeffs. Yeah, I was like, okay, I get that they don't feel that they're the same. I get that the same way I don't consider, I attended a Baptist church. I don't consider myself the same as the Westboro Baptist. I used the example before. But... Just that being like me saying, religion is great. No one has ever done anything wrong in the name of religion. <laughs> it's like, okay, let's try being a little sensitive to greater issues. So the idea that every guy in polygamy is a good guy is sort of like, and I think one of the other sister wives were like, well, I don't know. There's the same problems in Madonna's relationship. It's like, so I thought that was a major misstep. Like, okay. Uh, then the wives and all the wives are talking to Paige about where does your insecurity come from. And the other wives, it was actually pretty interesting. I think almost it's. I think it was actually more interesting than ever seeing them do a talking interview where they all agreed was where they had all the wives and all the husbands because they all they weren't necessarily going to be with someone who was going to instantly agree with them. So it was a little more interesting, like. Um, the two wives that are married to Colton said that one of them said she had, she had some jealousy issues because he kept his shirts at the other wife's house. That was probably the most interesting thing they said the whole season. Like, that's what we were like, that's, that's, that's the real nitty gritty. But anyway, um, back to Paige. Her insecurity comes from her husband being, being a horn dog. Who's, who's sneaking around. I mean, there's a reason. A lion. So and that but she's all came out it. like a hot crap so, pie. So the next one, they're gonna bring Brandy out, and Paige is instantly. Now here's my my thing. I think there's ample evidence that Paige should have a problem with Bernie. He set up his dating profile without telling her. He was sexting with a girl almost instantly. Who knows what else she didn't catch? Because I'll tell you, after that, he remembered to relate, re, uh, delete his messages. Um, he. So Paige has a problem with Bernie, and I think it, she well should. Uh, I think she also has a problem with polygamy, but she, for whatever reason, she just will not. I think she knows that if she said no to polygamy, that he would leave her. 
That's what I think. Seems because that way. because they they don't have the religious, they don't have the community pressuring them, they don't have family pressuring them. She clearly doesn't want to share her husband. She keeps talking about how she wants friends, and it's like, join a quilting bee, uh, a, go a wine club, join anything, anything, um, yeah. to have some friends that aren't trying to bop your husband. So anyway, but my point is, instead of being mad at Bernie about any of this, she turns it all on Brandy. Now, this, this is my thing, is if I was Brandy in that very first time, that she was like, got all huffy, I would have been like, you know what, we're not even, I'm not even started this, and you're already, pitch, I'm not interested. No thank you. So, as desperate does, as desperate is. I, I don't understand any of these women. I mean, anyway. Uh, so, and then they show Paige the clip, and Paige won't even acknowledge that she kind of has a stanky attitude. Well, I don't think I was being defensive. I was just, I just didn't know what to say. And, and that's where you be honest and you say, the the reality of that situation just hit me and I realized, I can't do this. It's like standing on the end of a... She, she doubled down. It's like when you're, when you're like, I'm going to go off the high dive. Look, it's not that high. And then you get up there and you look down and you go, and I'm gonna oh say, man. You know who else doubled down? Crazy. I had a baby and I'm married to a hell's angel and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I know. Blah. Well, anyway, so... So then Brandy starts to say that they claim that they made out. Now, we know it's true because Bernie doesn't say, I never kissed you. What does he say? He said, well, it just happened. Nothing like you're describing nothing it. Nothing like, that's not how, it's not how you described it. Okay, that is a far cry from. Now, this is what I think. Now, this is my, I am not, this is what I gathered from how it went was that Brandy was saying, hey, I didn't come on to him. He came on to me, and it was mutual, but I wanted to respect Paige's feelings. That's what I think she was saying. That's, was so, so I was saying no because I wanted to respect Paige's feelings, but I was into it, but I wanted to respect her feelings. I think what Bernie heard was that he forced himself onto her. That's not what I got, that, well, that's his whole, I think that's why he was so defensive, was he didn't want it to imply that he forced himself onto her. That's what I got out of it. Because that's why he's like, well, it's not like how you said. I'm thinking he's thinking it was, they were mutually canoodling. And she was trying to say, hey, I didn't, I was trying to respect the rules of the game, but your husband over here wasn't. That's what I got out of it. Mm. There was a lot of shouting. But the thing is, is once again, Paige, instead of being like, Bernie, I, you're the one I have an ongoing committed relationship with. You're the one who keeps breaking the rules over and over and over again. Brandy, I'm not interested in talking to you, but you're the problem. Instead, she's like, you lied. Now, let me tell you that you're a blankety, I don't even know what she called her. What kind of, for, for kissing a married man. Well, she thought they were in a relationship. I'm just saying that, so she turns in, and then all the real feelings come out. Well, then, then it's like, I asked you this morning if you ever kissed her. It's like, she knows what's going on. She's trying to play this whole, oh, I'm fine, I want polygamy. It's just the timing, it's just the, no. This is a hot mess waiting to happen. So, then they all storm out, and then all the guys, and then they're all, okay, this way, wrong way, and we're done. So no, so they, they all go outside. People got really mad because they thought that Eldridge was was yelling at the production at the woman producer. I think he was just. I'm not. I'm not to say. Well, first of all, we found that he has a he has a third wife already. The first wife doesn't want to film, oh. or she's left him. I don't know. But according to Twitter, in general, I try to find out the. I don't. I try to avoid the real story because I don't have time to watch the reality show and then parse through We're not all the investigative stuff. reports. No, we are. We review the TV show. What we are seeing and poke fun at crazy people. Well, at least what we see on TV. They might be crazier in real life. They might be sane. I don't know. That's not my job. But anyway, the people got real mad at Eldridge turning the production staff. Now, this is what I. This is what I see. They see it as a genuine moment they need to help someone else who's having trouble. They are one of the few people in the world who genuinely know. Uh, they 
they actually gave some pretty solid advice in terms of like you need to repair this relationship with your wife. I think the problem is I think that Bertie is just horn dog. Well, clearly. I mean, we know that, and he's. A, I wrote sneaky and a liar, and then my husband, my uh, son, added these other notes. Quite clever. Quite, quite clever. Uh, anyway, and then um, and then they were telling the production, we just need more time. And the production staff, on the other hand, is like, for goodness sakes, can people stop disappearing? We just need to film this and wrap this up. But I will say that this was probably my favorite episode of the season because something interesting happened. And it wasn't super produced. And now people get on the reality show producers. This is, this is self-produced in the sense that this family's decided this is what we're going to present and we're all going to be on our best behavior during the camera. You mean like the production didn't suggest going and coming out to a bunch of ducks? Yeah, they probably were like, uh, guys, there's no one here. So anyway, uh, that is this season. They got footage for that, so. We are looking at new shows they're going to be recapping. Bill and Ted's Stupid Adventure. No, uh, that is called Double Shot of Love with, with PJ. Bill and Ted. <laughs> P PJ. PJ Dolly B. Uh. DJ, Polly, D, and Vinny. It looks like a train wreck of epic proportions. They already had one girl cry and kick herself off the show. Uh, so we're doing that one. We're looking at <clears throat> Real Housewives of Potomac. And we're looking at Worst Cooks in America Celebrity Edition. So hit us up in the comments if you have another suggestion for shows that have not already premiered that are coming soon. Maybe a love and hip hop, one of them. Anyway. Okay, we'll hit you up soon. Bill and Ted's.